Welcome to Tammy's Soul Speak featuring animal intuitive and medium Tammy Hendricks, offering insight, spirituality, transformation, and clarity to every soul. Now, here's Tammy. Hello, everybody. Happy Wednesday. Hope wherever you are, it's, uh, you've, you're having a nice day. You had a good start to the day. Uh, maybe it's evening where you are. What, maybe it's middle of the day like me. So wherever you are in the world, I'm so happy you're here. Uh, I love that I'm seeing lots and lots of new people, uh, lots of great questions all over. And so it really lends an energy to the show that is so special and allows us to really create live together. So it's a very, very organic show, as you've probably discovered by now. And if you're new, it's going to be a treat for you because your live participation is actually uh, what opens up the energy space. And we do actually create a, a, a space and you can feel it as we move into it. And you can feel it when we end for the day because we carry that energy with us. So I love whatever we're creating and you are an integral part Part of that. Um, and I see you're coming into the room. I'm so excited. Hey, Lori, it's good to see you. Good afternoon. Hey, Jamie. Oh, I'm happy you're here, Jamie. I'm really happy. Hey, Peggy. Happy Wednesday to you too. Um, and hey, Claire, good afternoon. So good to see you and be with the group again. Yes, yes. Um, it's, it's just a wonderful organic gathering that I so appreciate and always look forward to. Um, Hi, Mary and Dawn. Well, from Canada, it's great to see you. I'm glad everybody's gathering. It's going to be, as usual, a special show. The animals have chimed in. I actually had to rearrange things because the show shifted quite a bit, right as I thought I had everything organized. And then I had um, one of my dogs actually stepped in to say that he wanted to be part of the show. So I'm like, okay, we will definitely do that. And then the, the next show will, um, we'll catch up from the, the more animal messages. Um, hey, Susie, good. You're here. And Laura, good to see you. So, you know, today's topic is something that, uh, we all deal with as humans too about trust. You know, what is trust? And, you know, trust isn't outside of yourself. Um, it's something that you don't have to get. It, it's actually in general, it's an inner knowing. And I think as we uh, go further into the discussion, like with the animals, uh, they actually mirror us quite a bit in, in how we are experiencing trust. Um, so, Hi, Margaret. It's good to see you. Happy midweek to you, too. Um, so I don't know for you and, and you know, you can chime in here. Uh, trust, in my opinion, and with, you know, people, animals develops over a period of time, you know, with many different experiences that form our trust foundation. So let me ask you something. Would you say that trust has to be earned? And would you say it has to be earned with people and is it earned with animals? I mean, I can tell you with mine, I'd love to see some comments on that and your thoughts about that. Um, I know with my animals and all the different ones that have come to me, uh, that was definitely something that just like with everything else, they have to step forward and make a choice to trust. It's an actual choice that they make. Um, so it, it, you know, it's, it's something that if you think about for humans, does trust have to be earned with you? Do you just automatically give trust? Do you have to see that the person's trustworthy? Um, it, it's, it's one of those things that whether we're human or animal, we all experience that. Mary says, definitely it has to be earned. Peggy says both. Um, hey, Cindy, good to see you here. I'm glad you're here too. Um, Laura says, earned both ways. I totally agree. Yes, um, totally agree. And Alexa, absolutely, trust must be learned with humans and animals. And Mary says, respect and trust. Oh, 100%. I'm getting all of her body chills. Patricia, it's good you're here. Thank you for joining. And Katrina, yay, from Rome. I just love it when you all come into room. So 
you know, with humans and animals, think about the trust foundation that is formed. Uh, you know, their experience with humans form that. And so many times they even, well, most of the time they overcome any negativity in their lives. So my question is, how do they do that? How do they do that? And how can they teach us to do the same? What do you think? I mean, what do you think about the animals and how they uh, learn to trust, even though perhaps they've been terribly abused or they've been uh, neglected? Um, maybe humans have let them down. You know, our topic today is going to remind you that true healing comes from within and it's an ongoing process not an end result. And so to trust, we have to allow ourselves to be vulnerable too. And so I think with, with life, uh, we have to practice trust. And it's not just a, oh, okay, I trust and, and therefore that's it. I really think it's an ongoing life uh, experience for us, an ongoing journey. We have to continue to, to determine in each moment whether uh, this person is trustworthy in the animals. Once they trust you, it's like you're on the end. Um, and, and they seem to have a good sense of people. I think they're a very good read of, of humans. Um, but, you know, when they can let their past go and trust again, you know, to me, that shows a pocket of hope for humans and how to navigate trust because so often we can't leave that piece out and we take it with us and uh, they seem to be able to step forward into the moment and live there and actually let those pieces go. I know for many, many of the animals that, that have come to me and they've had terrible backgrounds and I might not even know all you know the details of that but they will share that over time animals are great storytellers and they will definitely uh, let us know bits and pieces even of their past and as just like with us when we tell our stories we start to heal and so it's the same thing with animals it allows them to be heard just absolutely some, they matter enough that someone's willing to listen and take the time and hold the space for them to um, rest in whatever has happened to them in their lives. And so those pockets of hope for us, uh, we can learn so many things from the animals and, you know, they repeatedly open to loving relationships with humans in spite of great betrayal. And that to me is the most amazing. Um, and it's such an honor that the animals would trust us in that way. Um, how did they do that? I'm still learning from them every day. They're so courageous and they can see the good in all of us. Um, Jamie says, I've had some animals. I've felt trust me from day one, even the ones that have had bad experiences with people. Others, it takes quite some time to earn that trust. Yes, I would agree, Jamie. It's, um, it's very individual for the animal. And, you know, I have seen the gamut of uh, spending their lifetimes. I mean, Sasha, the Husky was one that it took her her entire lifetime to actually feel that vulnerability and trust. And so, yes, I love just like we're all individuals, all the animals are too. And the, the backgrounds that come to are so varied from or come from are so varied. So I love that as a animal community here, we all understand that uh, each individual is different and each story is different and that we are willing to give the space. And so as we progress in our discussion, you'll be able to not only think of animals, but people may be in the same predicament and maybe it's even yourself. Um, maybe I've worked with trust my whole life. So the animals have been like the, the greatest teachers for me. So I want to put up something that I pulled together that I think would be very helpful as we're having this discussion. Um, you know, when an animal's working on trust, Renee, if you would put that slide up, here are a few things to consider. Number one would be, you know, if you're looking at an animal or you're considering what are the circumstances behind my animal's background? Do I know of any abuse, neglect, or betrayal she has 
or he or she has endured. It's one of the things to observe, you know, as you're just trying to uh, determine and feel into uh, their lives and what they may be thinking. Um, does that animal flinch or recoil from touch sometimes? Um, is it often? If, if so, there's a good chance that they have had some experience, just like we, if we had been hit, we would flinch too and recoil. And, and sometimes it takes a long time. I'm going to share a story with you about a dog named Ollie here in just a minute, but sometimes it takes a long time for their bodies to uh, be able to handle any kind of touch. And I, Ollie, the little white dog I'm going to tell you about is very much like that. Laurie says, my dogs uh, were, let's see, were in the bedroom when my spouse had a heart attack. It was very traumatic for us all. Um, Ty, my boy, has changed since then. Any suggestions on what to do? I'll tell you what, Laurie, if we can hang on to that question, I will try to get to it later. Um, let me give that a feel. And I'm sure that um, as we go through, uh, maybe some, some ideas will drop in for you. Um, but back to this again, does my animal prefer to be with other animals rather than humans? Have you ever seen that where they, they would absolutely prefer uh, to be with another animal? Um, mine definitely, I have several like that um, that are still still living, still with me, and they're, they're best friends with each other. They do really well with each other. Um, people, uh, they may be a little bit more hesitant on. Um, and so more questions that you could ask. Uh, does he or she tune out and seem to be in his or her own world? Renee, if you would get that slide up with the four or five, thank you. Um, does he or she tune out and seem to be in his or her own world? I had um, a dog named George once. He was a basset hound and he had been locked in a an apartment and I guess the person just left. So he had been in this apartment for three weeks when he was found. And George came to me, sweetest, sweet, I'll have to show you a picture of him soon, uh, sweetest Basset ever. And he definitely tuned out and he would, and some of you have mentioned uh, that when they lick and he's repeatedly just looking one place, he, he got into a his own world, his own bubble where he tuned things out. It was a self-soothing mechanism. And so would you consider your pet a loner keeping a safe distance when life gets scary? I know one of the questions uh, that I've seen coming through was uh, about a dog who's super nervous around cars and, you know, noises and fast movement. Um, so, you know, they will pull away from, just like with us, if, if, if a room is, is too, you know, full of people and is too much energy, let's say you're in an airport and there's massive energy there, you know, it, it's really a safety mechanism and a coping mechanism to pull back. And that can actually be um, the way they live life. Um, does your pet like to be in control of situations? Uh, if so, how? What would that look like? being in control? Do they have to go through the door first? Do they have to be the first one at everything? Where does the control piece show up? Um, you know, and does your pet give love openly and freely? Um, what does that look like? And what does it look like for us? Um, oh, okay. Alexis says three to all. Um, with my new rescue four months and still does not like me to touch him. That's okay because there's still uh, definitely, there's no time limit. And I love this came up. There's no time limit of when, well, when any of us really can step forward and trust uh, it's very individual and it's very much a choice that they uh, make on an inner level. So I would just be patient. Sometimes I find uh, people are, like, why aren't they, you know, they've been with me for three weeks. Why aren't they further along? Well, because they've got their own path and they're working on their own. There's still healing going on. That's the detoxing goes on for quite some bit, especially with rescues, uh, especially coming from different backgrounds. There's no rhyme or reason on how long it takes. Um, I've always seen like an animal come, say, um, years ago from the shelter to me. It usually takes about two weeks of kind of 
getting adjusted to the environment, kind of in training to what the energy is. And then once that two weeks and they're like, oh, OK, I think I'm going to stay. That's when that you'll see another shift of healing happen. It's really interesting. Um, so, yes, uh, I think just give it some time. And so. Renee, if you would put that um, next screen up, I'd love to have you all um, take this suggestion with you um, after the show. Uh, if you want, you, so you could use those questions. I'd write a story of what it means to trust from your animal's perspective. It is amazing when you go into their perspective, uh, what things will come forward. And there's no rhyme or reason. You don't have to you know, I have people tell me all the time, oh, I'm not a good writer. You know what? Write from your heart. We can all do that. It's not about being a good writer or a bad writer. And, you know, we're all seized from English class. Um, I was not one of those, <laughs> but um, we are all seized, you know, from worrying we're doing the wrong thing. If we just, if we just allow our hearts to speak, oh my goodness, the animals will speak through you. And that's a, that's a form of communication. You can you definitely be communicating um, with those animals. Um, so I want to share a story of uh, my Ollie. Ollie is still with me. He is, I want to say Ollie's probably 17 years old now. That's Ollie. Ollie has a very interesting history. And um, I found, he actually came to me yesterday. I was in a quiet space and all of a sudden I felt this urge to start writing. So I got my iPad out and I just started writing. I was like, what am I writing? And I felt all his energy really strongly. I'm like, oh, okay, we're joining in the show, I see. So I started just writing, just typing. And what came was pretty amazing as he's channeling his feelings to me and he is sharing what his perspective is, I, I haven't, I, I, it looks to me like it's the start of maybe chapters because it's obviously when I read it, you're going to see it's not the whole story, but that's what I, I would say for you. Don't shy away from writing. Even if you think it's bad, just write from your heart. Wayne Dyer had a writer's workshop that was writing from the soul. If any of you remember that, and I always loved that. And when I heard of that writing from the soul, I was like, oh my gosh, somebody else does that too. How wonderful. We can all do that. We're all writers. You're all storytellers. And the animals love, love, love to be part of that. Before I tell um, Ollie's story though, let me switch back. Lori, I will answer you right now. Um, so to get back to Lori, her question is, um, her dogs were in the bedroom when her spouse had a heart attack, and it was very traumatic for all of us. Time, my boy, has changed since then. Any suggestions on what to do? Well, Lori, I'd have to see, I guess, have to talk to you and ask, um, what kind of changes have you seen? Like, what is he doing differently? And uh, or uh, the other thing is, is are you guys talking about it? Are you uh, like in front of him, you know, talking about all the different changes? Sometimes when we put more attention on the changes, it actually makes us feel a little bit more self-conscious. And it's the same for animals. So, you know, just in not knowing exactly what changes have been, um, I would consider flower essences for him and actually for the entire family. Uh, you can, uh, this great company, Green Hope Farm Essences in New Hampshire, um, they do wonderful essences that help, help us all. They just kind of calm down our electrical systems that go out of whack when we have trauma happen and it uh, gets stuck in the body. So, I mean, and when I read Ollie and tell you about Ollie again, um, I'll definitely, you'll see, and, and we all know it does, it does land there. Um, and suggestions, I would just be really patient with whatever it is, um, you know, and you can pop in in the comments and, and give me some examples of what he's doing and I can probably help further. Um, so let me, hello, Pamela, you're still coming in. Um, let's see, Claire says our little Romanian rescue, Lola, took three years to trust, but during that time she trusted and sought comfort from our other little rescue from Romania. That was fine by us. And now she's a different dog. 
Uh, yes. So I just get all over body chills because Ollie actually was quite feral when he came to me. And uh, I had another little dog named Zoe. I still have her. I still have Ollie. And she actually helped me with Ollie. He would respond to her far better than any human. And to this day, they are like best of friends and they hang out. The I think Zoe's probably 15 now. Ollie is, is 17 and he's been with me ever since he was about two. So yeah, the other, the animals help us. They, I actually, I'm like, thank you so much because they can reach them on a level that we can't. So we're like teaming up together. That's lovely. I love that. And, and they can trust and kind of lean on the energy of the other animal uh, to trust and see how it's done. Kind of like with children, you know, watching adults. Absolutely. Um, Susie says she works with the cats, at the animal shelter. Many cats come to the shelter because their owner has passed away and they have retreated and hide in their cages. I try to interact with them and with kind words, eye blinks, slowly show them my hand and slowly gain their trust this takes a certain amount of time to earn their trust. Yeah, I think it does. Trust can be a slow process and trust can definitely, once it's there, it's one of the greatest, oh, it's one of the greatest gifts that when we see an animal start to trust again, think, oh, it's, it's like, it just warms your heart because then you, you can just see them visibly relax. Um, and once we relax, healing really can start it really comes in um, and it, it's almost like it speeds up once our whole system relaxes. Um, so I'm going to read you about Ollie. So Renee, if you put Ollie back up so they can see him. Um, he came 2006 and like I said, is still with me and is just the sweetest, sweetest little guy ever. So this is what he shared with me yesterday and insisted that I share it with you. The little white dog lay very still in the ditch, practicing his invisibility cloak. Hot and panting heavily, he had narrowly escaped being hit by several cars. That last one nearly clipped his tail, which was already short enough as it was. He sighed a deep and lonely sigh. Humans are scary and mean, he reminded himself. Can't be trusted. Shuddering as he remembered his life before the streets, he closed his eyes tightly, trying to stop the images from coming. They flashed quickly, snapshots in motion, complete with sound. Big, scary humans and loud, angry voices. Just then, a crack of thunder rang through the sky. He jolted up and started running, certain he was being chased again, certain that whatever was after him was closing in and that he would not live much longer. A car passed by as he quickly dashed behind a bush out of sight where no one could see him. He watched as the car slowed down, pulled onto the side of the road, and finally came to a complete stop. A woman emerged. She peered his direction, squinting her eyes, scanning every inch up and down the road. He was pretty sure she could see the bush shaking along with his body. But finally, she got back to the car and drove off. Whew, he thought. Close call. Gotta be more careful. Soon it was quiet again, with no more traffic in sight. It was then that he noticed he had stopped shaking and was very, very hungry and tired. Stay on the move, he told himself, but his little body was exhausted. Maybe if I just rest a little. It didn't take much for him to dig a shallow hole in the loose dirt. Checking once more to make sure he was alone, he settled in behind the bush and fell fast asleep. What he didn't know was that it was Christmas Eve a time where human hearts can soften and open, allowing kindness and compassion to emerge, a time when those who have hearts that can see show up just at the right time and place. He also didn't know that his life was about to change forever. And that's where he ended yesterday on the cliffhanger. Um, I, yes, he is, his story is very remarkable, but as you can see, he, shared his feelings with me and he shared uh, the images of where he was before I actually happened upon him. And even today, little Ollie, his body is still uh, retaining some of that 
flight or fight kind of like running energy was about two. And when I, when I happened upon him. And so if I want to pet Ollie, I can't just pick him up. I actually have to sit on uh, some furniture where he's nearby and I have to turn my head like that. And I have to stick out my arm and I, but I can't be looking at him and he'll come and he'll let me pet him even today, even, you know, so many years later, since 2006, he never was able to quite get to where he could just jump up. But I was fine with that. You know, however far he grows in his life, he's perfect. And he loves other dogs. He feels so safe with everybody. Um, people now, too, and people who help me on the property. And, um, you know, if I'm gone for a while and come back, he never forgets. That's the thing with animals. If you, they don't forget, they remember you even after years and you come back. So little Ollie, and I'll tell you real quickly, um, after he, you know, I, I, he actually long story, but he went into a ditch. And so we actually had to trap him. I don't normally do this. I think he's probably the only one I've ever had to do that with. So got him and he ended up staying inside for about three months and I would go sit with Ollie uh, hours and hours, uh, you know, and talk to him. And he would shake violently when I, I came in, just shake the whole time I was in there, his whole body would be convulsing and shaking so much. And I sat there and I didn't respond. I didn't like, Oh no, please stop shaking. Don't stop. I'm so sorry. You're going to be all right, little guy. I just had soft, soft voice and kind voice. And I was just with him as he shook. And what he discovered was he could shake and nothing happened to him. So one day I saw him start to shake and he was like, hmm, she's still here. I'm still here. Everything's still the same. And he stopped shaking that day. And then that's when I would put little treats on my shoulder and I'd sit and he'd, he'd come and grab them and he'd run off. So yes, it, that trust takes a long time, but his sharing that, right at this last hour for the show, I'm so grateful and I'm interested to know what else he's going to tell me about his perspective of how this went down. Um, so that's why I wanted to share that in case you do decide to get super creative and do your writing from the heart and writing from the soul from your animal. I think um, it'll be worthwhile. I think you'll really be surprised at what comes and you, you don't have to be, you know, your name, comma, animal communicator, you're all communicators already. You just have to get into practice of knowing that. Um, and, and, and the animals are like, fine, finally, we can teach you. So, you know, we all work on trust and forgiveness at some point in our lives. Uh, Ollie has definitely had to do that. Um, but the stories of all of our animals serve as mirrors for our own journey of how we've had to trust and what are what's our criteria for trusting i mean think about that one for a minute i wonder i, I think the animals uh really rely on reliability voice tone um consistency um claire says can we have part two next time i don't know we'll have to see if ollie chimes in i will definitely try um i know molly has stepped in for the next show as well so they're starting they're starting to line up and um it's really fun because like i said i wasn't realizing ollie wanted to be part of it and i love that here's why especially ollie's so meek and mild and he's so quiet and he's so gentle and he's he's just such um He's so respectful of everything that for him to step forward and want me to share it, think about that for a minute. It's huge for him. It's a huge spiritual leap for him. He's moving forward. So he has grown. He has grown quite a bit. And that's the beauty. We get to, we get to see that. Um, Janet says, Grace trusted me, but had trust issues with other people and animals her whole life. You know what? That happens a lot where we're their main person and they trust, but that other people not so sure of. But if you think of children, um, same thing sometimes, you know, they just don't trust everybody. But when they do, they, they go full out, children and animals. When they do, they go full out. So part of my wonderful work that I, I love to do is I talk to wonderful people like you all and you share your stories with me uh, and the animals share their stories. And I'm just, I'm just so amazed sometimes at what I hear all the time, actually. And it's such an honor. And so 
I had such an experience with um, a, a, a client recently who shared a story that I, I just want to, I asked her if we could share it with you all because it is such a beautiful, I don't know, surprise and gift that she discovered in herself that I think we all resonate with it. So Renee, if we're calling it the Annie sweater story. Um, so Renee, if you would put up um, Annie, the photo, this is Annie and Jamie, and this is the sweater story. And so I took part of what she wrote, but I really want to read you if you'll humor me just a minute. It's a beautiful story. On May 11th, 2019, a 12-year-old blind poodle was surrendered to the shelter. She was covered in filth, flea, and fleas and ticks. I was overcome with anger and determined that this dog would have the life she deserved from this moment on. I brought her home and scrubbed the dirt from her matted fur. We sat in the grass watching her. Suddenly, she began to hop like a bunny and took off running in a prance back and forth over and over again uh, across the yard. This dog had so much life yet to live, and I was determined it was going to be the best life she always deserved. We adopted Annie as part of our family the next day. I'm getting chills reading this, Jamie. Annie wasn't in good health and required multiple medications. Fall came and the weather started to turn colder. So I got Annie a sweater coat to keep her frail um, frame warm. That sweater became her outfit. The sweater was to be one of the most important symbols of our love. In May 2021, I made my last drive to the vet with Annie, took off her sweater coat for the last time, told her how much we all love her and that she was always meant to be part of the family. I clung to her sweater like a security blanket every night, praying to feel her curls brush up against me as I slept, even if just for one more time. Five months after Annie passed, I received a call about a senior dog in bad shape that needed a foster. She looked identical to Annie, and it shocked me. I took her home because I felt like I could help her get back on her feet, given the experience our family had taking care of Annie. The day came for her to go to a rescue after being with me. As I packed up her things, I noticed I didn't have anything to send her with to keep warm. I'm going to be lucky if I don't sniffle during this. <clears throat> I searched high and low for anything I could give her to wear. But deep down, I knew all I had was Annie's sweater. I went to my bedroom. I picked up Annie's sweater. I hugged it as tight as I could and reluctantly wrapped it around her slim frame. It was a perfect fit. As the car drove away, I expected to feel a flood of grief wash over me with a cup full of regret. Instead, it felt like the clouds had cleared for the first time in six months. Letting go of her sweater suddenly made this unbearable grief feel lighter. In fact, I had a rush of feelings that I can only believe was her telling me she was proud of me for letting go and honoring her by giving another dog her sweater. I realized that letting go of her sweater didn't mean I was letting go of her. She would always be in my heart. And now that I was able to say her name, laugh at the funny home videos and look at her picture and smile with peace in my heart. Our family grew so much because of Annie. In her honor, we continued to be a safe haven for senior dogs with special needs that need rescue and rehabilitation. Isn't that an amazing, amazing story of trust? We have to trust that what we're feeling in her her intuition told her, her heart told her to share that with another. She trusted herself and Annie, who was nudging her along gently to make this incredible, incredible leap spiritually. And uh, see, she said, I was so surprised I felt that. I was so surprised. It's like we discover how we discover the gift in the grief. And, you know, I love that Annie wanted her sweater to go to another because when we send our energy out whether it's like we used to have the the gift store and i think i've, I've shared you know when we would wrap the gifts we would do the monogramming whatever energy we put onto something when we're handling it and when we're being with it including animals it goes out into the world and so this beautiful energy of annie went with this little precious, precious soul that was carrying it forward. You can't get better than this. So I should have warned you for the Kleenex, but I forgot and I was sniffling myself. 
And I love that you love the story. Um, Pat says, I can't wait to start writing The Warming Nest, A Tale of Benjamin Bunny. That was a really special story. Um, yeah, Kat says, oh my God, Kleenex alert. Um, I love that you love the story that touched my soul. And I, I really, really appreciate, Jamie, for you allowing me to share Annie with us. And what an incredible, incredible being that she actually is. Cindy says, I loved hearing about Annie. What a wonderful story to share. You know, that's where we all benefit from the animal stories. And we can learn, like we're sitting around a campfire as we're sharing these stories, animals are the same. Um, Susie, God bless people that can do that. I wish I could. I simply slip into despair. Yes, Kleenex. You know, Susie, though, you also have this incredibly beautiful heart that shows up to be with us and share in these stories. And so your energy alone, all of your energies uh, add to the the group energy and the, and the beauty and the opening of a heart. So even if you do feel despair over that, just know that there are other times that you actually are opening the windows to your heart and allowing that to go forward. And I really feel like um, that's part of why we're all here, right? It's part of why the animals are all here with us. And so if I can share, you know, my stories and, and my animals who are part of my life and have been, and you can share yours with us, we all grow all of us. So I love your questions. And I love that you um, might even consider writing that story. You'll have to let me know if you do. I hope that each show when I give uh, suggestions or, or ideas that the animals certainly chime in that, you know, that you have like little gifts in your pocket that you take with you and you go out in the world and perhaps you can share that with others. Perhaps you can share it with children. That's that's another thing. Whatever we're learning here and with the animals, we can share with children. Oh, Laurie, I'm glad that touched your soul. Uh, it, it touched mine, as you could see. I just, um, the realization that she came to was quite profound, uh, that we can let go and we don't lose. We just grow and we expand. So I'd love to get to some questions and uh, photos. We had so many people reach out and I will do my best to get as many as I can. Um, I, I love to have you share in those uh, stories because uh, and, and what I'm reading. So Renee, if you could start rolling those, that would be great. So this is my Tegan died a few years ago. She was everything. I took her to the vet for a checkup. 30 minutes later, left without her. She was gone, had a bad heart and tumor in her throat. Laura asks, is she still with me? I can 100% guarantee that she is. And she's showing me and telling me she pops in. She pops in and out um, like a little popcorn uh, dog where she's uh, very active and moving um, around you. Uh, I don't know if you've had signs with her, but She's very comical. She, she, she says she's very funny and she said she was mischievous, had kind of a, a funny sense of humor and you would always know very witty. She considers herself witty and she's still all of that and more, she said. So open your maybe heart and mind to considering, why don't you write that story? That would be great. She'd totally do it. Great communicator. I love that. Thank you for sharing that. This is Cisco. We had to let him go April 1st, 2022. He was almost 32 years old and the sweetest, most gentle horse. Um, we had him for 30 years. Gosh, um, that's a long time. I've had horses. Uh, let see. My question is, does he come to visit his buddy Chance, who he was with for over 30 years? Does Cisco come to visit him and did we go do the right thing by letting him go? I get the sense he's saying that he was ready. He was ready. And he said he felt totally complete and what an honor it was to be with you uh, and where he was and have his friends. Um, he loves it. You think of him often because he's actually in your, he's, he's deliberately nudging you uh, when you have like these random thoughts and you think, Oh, I'm just, um, randomly thinking, I don't know. No, it's them trying to like knock on the door. Like, Hey, Hey, I'm here. It's me. What are you doing? And you'll think of this like special memory and that's that they like to drop in and spur those on just like Ollie randomly, um, 
did that yesterday. So I love that um, he's such a beautiful soul. He says, quite the gentleman. He says, quite the gentleman. Thank you for sharing. I feel like, you know, when I'm reading these and I like for you to see the, the questions along with the photos is we all get to feel the energy of that animal, which is quite, you know, profound, actually, with Cisco being uh, amazing, uh, stable energy and this beautiful, soft spirit in this huge body. I love that. This is Jake. I adopted him four months ago. He is about four years old. Prior to me adopting him, he was with a behavior specialist due to his anxiety. He was in a hoarding situation where he was born and lived for three years. Goodness. My question is, will he ever fully trust me? He will come near me when I'm petting one of the other dogs. Yep, I get it. But only then, and even then, he will not let me pet him. Yep, Ollie. He will have my love and heart and a loving home regardless if he ever does fully trust me. But I would love for both of us if he did. So, you know what I've noticed um, with Ollie, and this should be helpful for you. I'm feeling this parallel uh, that it's not that he doesn't trust you. It's that he uh, is responding to the energy in his body, just like Ollie responds to that kind of set place of uh, staying back from humans. Or if he sees a hand reaching out, he backs up. And then that's why you might want to try just being really still like you're you know, petting the other dogs. Even today, Ollie will come over when I'm petting the other dogs. They may be all over me. Everybody's saying hello. And I'll look over and Ollie's watching like he really wants to just come up to, but he just quite can't yet. So I would, I would honor where Jake is, which I'm sure you are. And I would just totally applaud where whatever he does and just say, if he does allow you to pet, just tell him, thank you. That was so special. And how did you know I needed that today? And that's what I've done with all of them. And it's really made a big difference. Um, I have a feeling he's going to come around. Uh, he says he's got a big heart that he wants to show you. So I would just, you know, go back after this and say, Hey, let's work on this together. You know, I've had problems too in times where my, I, I'm, I'm a little scared and I, wow, you do too. I'm, we'll work on this together. And that way it's a, it's a, a joint. You're kind of doing that along with them. And it, it shows too that we're no different and they know that, but when we can actually verbally and, and out loud say that um, it really helps a lot. So thank you for sharing Jake. He's quite handsome quite handsome. And tell him that too. He loves hearing that. Loves it. So you didn't have that before. Um, Alexa says, yes, while I'm petting them, I put my hand out and he will come. Yep. Come sniff my hand. Yeah, definitely. I would just keep doing that. Um, and you could also put them on a uh, flower essence as well for, there's one for abandonment and abuse. You know, there's an anxiety one. Um, you know, we could all probably gulp that at some point. Um, Hi, Tammy. This is Roxy. We adopted her a few months ago. I just very drawn to her in a shelter after multiple visits. Couldn't get her off my mind. Oh, do I know that one? Flash forward to today. She has relaxed quite a bit. Her beautiful, loving soul has really come out. I can tell that. She's, she is so proud of herself, by the way. Um, although I've noticed she has this intense fear of cars. I think I mentioned this earlier. If a car passes us on a walk, she freezes and won't budge, even if it's far away. Just wondering if something might have triggered this fear from her past before ending up in the shelter and what can I do to help her? Well, first of all, I definitely would uh, get a flower essence, um, you know, for her. Uh, probably one that does have to do with a little anxiety. And um, I'm, I'm feeling, again, the abandonment and abuse piece with her. So that's going to help support her system. Um when I tune into her with the, I'm, I'm getting a ducking, like she feels like she's got a duck, like she's going to get um, hurt with these cars. So yes, there's something that's gone on in her past. She's not wanting to look at it either. Um, she almost like she wants to go forward and not have to think about that anymore. Kind of like that story when Ollie was telling me he shut his eyes to keep the flashes of the images from coming. She's giving me that same same kind of thing. So I wouldn't make, which I know you're not, I wouldn't make a big deal out of the car. Just notice. And if she needs to stop, you stop 
until she's ready to move again. It's all very natural. It's not um, something that is uh, we're scolding her for and we're you know drawing attention. I know you're not doing that, but that's that's how I would handle. And I think even as we're talking, she's relaxing as we're talking about it this way. She wonders if there's something wrong with her. She wonders if, um, yeah, she has a little bit of, oh, there's something wrong with me. So she's a little embarrassed about it. So that's why we want to tell her what a beautiful girl she is and, and she is um, so that she can grow into more of who she actually will, is becoming with you. And I thank you so much for sharing because it really it helps us all understand when our animals have these strange perky behaviors, like what in the world? Uh, patience is, is usually the best form to allow it just to pass and not make a big deal out of it. So thank you. And this is Pam. Uh, I lost my dog to diabetes and cancer in January of this year. Her name was Blue and she was a border collie. I feel like I've had signs, but no dreams. After her death, I did see her at church up near the priest. I had to blink my eyes a few times because I thought I was crazy. I do believe that was a sign to me, at least. That's what I want to believe. She was my best friend. My question is, how do I know she's at peace? She is definitely... Uh, that was that was definitely a visitation and a sighting and it showed up because you were open and you were your heart was open you were at church you were peaceful and it, it was a very uh, she's using the word a very overlit with uh, angelic energy space so if you think back to that time I wonder uh, think back of how you felt in that moment as you saw her, what was the energy around that? What did the room feel like? Could you feel the, the, the angelic influence there? Because she's saying that that was a portal. She's using the word portal. And she says, you were not crazy. And she's very honored that you brought this up and that you, you, she's saying, work on your belief. She says, she's telling me um, that she's helping you work on your trust of yourself. She's definitely, uh, she's using like right hand, she's your right hand. Uh, so I would, I would use any and all of the, you know, suggestions or exercises I do for any of my shows and just start somewhere with communicating with her. She loves that. She says she's still guiding you by the way. So, um, that part has not gone away. And, um, yes, she would love to hear from you. She says, thank you for sharing that. Let's see, our sweet Nellie is not doing so well with her disc disease. Some days are very good and some nights are really bad. I just do not know when is the right time. Oh, Lori, you know what? That's one of the hardest things to kind of gauge. And we ask our animals and we don't want to preemptively jump in. Uh, that's why I always tell my animals, you know, you let me know, like, I, I can't, I'm not responsible. It's your body. I will be your support. I will do anything I need for you. What is it? What are your wishes? What is it you want? And sometimes you go, well, I, you know, we think, oh, I don't know what those are. I'm confused myself. And our own emotions can get in the way of that. But in her case, I would definitely just take a look like today, for instance, and Ask yourself, you know, on a scale of one to 10, where is her quality of life going, you know, today? And usually when I'm, I'm working with people on one-on-ones um, and Zoom meetings, you know, we will go through that and uh, where we can be clear is in the moment. So we always know how to take the next best step. And that's what I feel like the situation is helping you uh, like land in and ground in is what is the next best step? Not tomorrow's step, not tonight, but this moment. We always know where that is and how to do that. It's when we project too far and I don't know when the time is right. I feel like she's saying that this is a journey between the two of you that you are experiencing. Um, and she appreciates the well, she appreciates the care she's being given. Um, so yes, I would definitely just keep that. Uh, I don't know. It, it's almost like hand you're holding her hand, you're holding her hand. And that's all she, she wants is for you to hold her, hold her, hold her paw, hold her hand as she goes through this journey because we, she's not afraid. She says she's not afraid. Uh, she said she's a very wise, wise girl. 
So Lori, I hope this helps. It's never easy. It's always we tend to doubt ourselves. So keep us posted on her, please. This is Maggie. I lost her to an aneurysm a couple years ago. Three months after she passed, I went to donate items to the animal shelter and this little dog just attached himself to me. Border Patrol found him running into the desert and took him to the shelter. He's a little clown, but I swear Maggie sent him to me to help me through my grief. And he, he, he let's see, I'm not sure what I would have done without him. A hundred percent animals join forces and, and they send the troops in, they send specific ones in a hundred percent. I think I've told you this before, like the uh, game of Red Rover, Red Rover sends so-and-so right over. It's almost like a call goes out and they're like, okay, your turn, you come over here. And they actually slide right in and land in place just at the right time for just what you're needed. He's extraordinarily bright, he says. He's like, I'm bright. I'm like a bright light. Um, And he's very appreciative that he's been able to help you. He's using his energy, like telling me, like seeing eye dog, like um, he says, he's correcting me, sorry, seeing heart dog. Uh, But he says definitely uh, in service and loves that he can help. And it's interesting that the border patrol found him running in the desert um, because he definitely has the energy of being aware of boundaries and edges and uh, space. He says he's really good with space. Uh, So I don't know what you've um, learned uh, from him or could identify these, again, he's going back to that he can communicate very well. So thank you for sharing him. He loves that photo, by the way. And this is one of my favorite pictures of Lily says, Mary, I helped her pass on March 29th of this year. I love her more than the world. Does she know that I did everything I could until I felt that she was suffering and I didn't want her to anymore. I've had her for over 16 years. I miss her every day and I still talk to her. Oh, Lily is absolutely uh, an amazing, um, stable, motherly. She says she took care of the family. She took care of everything. Um, And that she said until she couldn't anymore. And she was very, very connected uh, to helping you and loved her role in the family. The family theme for her was very, very important. Uh, so I don't know. She says she's she's like it starts getting rapid fire. She says that it, that family theme was also important for you as well and that you were a team and uh, that you recognize family no matter where you go. So I don't know if you have other animals or you uh, have a connection with animals as you are. She says you see you see true souls. And she says she, you saw her. So what a beautiful, like incredibly, uh, a beautiful honoring of sharing her. And she's not suffering. She's so grateful for the time she had with you and what she, she's saying, what she learned with you. Uh, And she wonders, she's, she's asking, she's wondering if you would write her story and write, even if it's of a snippet, uh, adventures or something. Okay. She's wanting a special memory for some kind of like letter or story. Um, I have a feeling that if you start to write, sit down and just doodle, it'll start coming. She's, she's ready. She's ready to jump in there and help you kind of co-author this little piece. Um, but she is definitely, uh, wants you to talk to her. I think that's, that it's actually really great is to continue to talk to her because she can hear it and she's there. Thank you so much for sharing that. Let's see, dear Tammy, this was our beautiful Riley who passed away in our arms from cancer five months ago. I hope Riley knows how much we love and miss him. He was three weeks shy of turning nine. We would love to know if he's still with us in spirit and has shown us a sign that he has no pain and is okay. Well, first off, he said he was very, um, yes, yes, he, he is definitely um, no pain at all and is still very present. He, he shows me with a bow tie. So I don't know. I know that's not a bow tie, but he clearly shows me that he had the energy of someone uh, who would wear a bow tie. So very gentlemanly, uh, very clear about himself. And he likes that you 
thought he was so handsome and that he's, he, he cherished every moment and the passing was incredibly sacred and it was a special journey uh, that you were meant to go on with Riley and he was meant to go on with you. So he got to experience uh, being in some way, someone's arms as he makes his transition, which animals make it so much faster and easier than we do. And they come back sooner as well. Um, so he's like saying, good job. We did a good job, nothing to worry about. And he wonders if you've got his pictures up. He's mentioning pictures. Uh, so I don't know if you have more photos. Uh, he, 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 he said he was particularly handsome. So there are so many to choose from. He's not quite sure where you would nail it down to just one or two. So perhaps you have a collage of pictures. He kind of likes that idea. If you don't uh, on the wall, um, but he, 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 he most a hundred percent still part of the family and just ask him, you know, Hey, I'd love to see a sign. If, if this isn't a sign with the show, I don't know what is that you were guided to share it. So I want you all to think that too. When you start sharing these things on the show, the questions you're being guided and the animals communicating with you. And it's just this amazing connection that we all have. So thank you, Nancy. He's, he's, he says he's quite stunning and still is. I'd be interested to know what other pictures you find. Let's see. This is uh, Peggy says, this is Molly and Puss. I lost Puss about a week or so ago to a coyote. Oh, oh, how tragic. And I'm sure that was sudden and heartbreaking. Um, I love and miss her. I hope she's happy over the rainbow bridge. I feel like it's my fault that I lost her, but she wouldn't come to me. You know, anytime we have uh, situations where uh, an animal runs in front of a car or an animal runs out the door and gets hit or they run and they meet up with a coyote, you know, it is our tendency to blame ourselves. But we have to remember that this is part of everybody's soul path, including the animal. Um, she is saying that, uh, yes, that she is, she's sorry for, that it has been so traumatic for you. Um, and she wants you to know that she did not suffer. She said that it was, I'm getting the sense that she, um, I don't know, she darted and she said it was all very quick. It was all very quick. Um, but she's been back. She's still, she's been back. So I don't know if you've seen some indentations or you have her favorite blanket out, like is in this photo, but she's, she still, it's almost like, she said, I never left. So where is where it's traumatic for us and it would be certainly for anybody. And it's, 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 it's very difficult to, to get over when something like that happens. Uh, what she's wanting you to know is she was instantly, instantly back, instantly back and um, to not worry about her, that she's fine and to not blame yourself. She says, she says, I, I, I ran out. I left. I, you know, it was, it was part of her path to leave. Um, and somewhat, I don't know how long she had been with you, but it was on, she said it was part of the plan and it was part of our soul contract. So you may, because of this experience, uh, I would certainly look to, um, what is it that I'm like going through right now? What kind of things are being picked up by this? Because the, the grief and the blame, especially the blame that you feel, uh, is, is something that is coming through from, earlier times with you. She wants you to work on that piece so that you don't take responsibility for everybody's uh, emotions and situations, she said. So I hope that helps. And I'm so sorry that happened. And this is TJ. Oh, my baby boy was lost a year ago. He was 21. Wow. Um, he was my everything and was there for me when no one else and helped me through things. I need to know if he visits me and his friend shadows is not so well to know that it's him. I would sing part of a little song to him. Is he okay, Donna? Oh my goodness. You know, when they're there with us so long, um, you know, it can feel like a part and a piece of us is missing. And he's showing me that he curled up near you a lot, that there was, um, he definitely had his space that he took over, as I've told you, cats in charge of spaces, but he 
he was your your right hand and almost like when you're on I don't know if when you're on a plane you've got those things around your neck that you put to kind of you know those pillows that's what he's showing me that he was for you like he was he was your comfort like you could lay your head on him or you could lay back um he's definitely showing me that image of things and he's very present he's he's showing me almost like a a whisper of of I'm wondering if you have seen him because I'm, I'm getting an image of him like shooting through the house, shooting here, shooting there. So if you catch something out of the corner of your eye and you're like, did I just see that? Yes. Trust it. They can do that. And he definitely uh, is. He said, he, I was going to say back on the job and I got corrected before I could finish it. And he was like, I never left the job. So that is how they look at it. And he does visit and he, he says he whispers to shadow. He whispers and uh, comforts shadow as well. Um, and if I'm reading that correctly, and you say you sing part of songs to him, please, please keep singing because that energy calls him in. Did you know that our voices call have a certain frequency? And when we use them and we're using them with our hearts, uh, you're talking about a, an energy uh kind of river and an energy connection sing to him yes sing his song he says keep singing he says don't ever stop singing so i love the gentle energy he has and this um very very nurturing nurturing guy um so thank you for sharing him with us and um he he likes that he was able to give the image and to share with the group he says it's fascinating as they come through, right? As Kat says, the guilt, blame, woulda, coulda, shoulda, yes, what ifs are so hard. I so agree. Absolutely. Um, well, I so appreciate you being here. And this has been just a, a profoundly special show. And it's touched my heart. It. I always appreciate you coming and every time it grows and grows. And so the next show I have uh, will be a little bit later. It's going to be August 24th, same time. Molly has already introduced herself saying that she's got some things she'd like to share and say. And so the next show is on animal messages. Um, and so stay tuned on that. Maybe between now and then you can be gathering some, take notes, get your little notebook and, and start listening, start listening um, through your heart. And then between the show and the next one, I have a special announcement I'm going to be making. Um, I'm going to be doing a workshop and I would love for all of you to come if you can participate and uh, let's see where we go with it. It'll probably be in a morning, like on a Saturday, a just a few hours. Uh, but I'm really excited and I'll be making an announcement on my Facebook page. Uh, if you're on my email list, I'll send that out, but just stay tuned. And I wanted to share that with you. That'll be September 24th. I'm thinking, um, love to have you there. Let's talk further. And as always, let's keep the conversation going. Have a great week. Bye. You've been enjoying Tammy's soul speak featuring animal intuitive and medium. Tammy Hendricks. 